Hello, this is J.B. East, otherwise known as James Bradley. <laughs> and this is Jeff Brown, J.B. West in France. Uh, how are you doing, James? So far, so good. Hey, listen, I want to talk, you, you and I stay in regular touch, and you brought up something really perspicacious, very salient that I thought made a lot of sense about what we're going through right now. You know, after not watching mainstream media oh, okay. for an awful long time, I, I went and studied it. Right. And I spent, I, I spent actually a couple days just watching mainstream media. And I know some of these people. I wrote four books, did four uh, book tours. So in being on their shows or being in green rooms of... <laughs> You know, Laura Ingraham or NPR, or, you know, I just, I don't know these people as neighbors or friends, but I, I, you know, have been with them. And so I just, I hadn't, the point is, it's now uh, March, April of 2022, and I wondered what was up, what was the flavor, and in watching them, I saw just something so simple. You know, in sales, you want to get it down to uh, uh, just like a simple word, you know? Where should we place the order, you know? <laughs> would, would you like this delivered on Wednesday or Thursday? And just, just make it as simple as possible for the customer and not complicate things. And what I saw was that a few years ago, it was Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, do you think that Eric's call means that the Trump family will go down into the hole called Russia, Russia, Russia? <laughs> and, they were, and they were all Russia, 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 Russia. And then if you turn, if you just waited uh, a few years and got to 2020, 2021, it was, um, uh, Mr. Government official, vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. Do they have enough vaccine, vaccine? Do we have vaccine? That, are they going to get the vaccine, vaccine, vaccine? You know, it, 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 it wasn't, um, should the government, should our taxes be paying for this? You know, where are the studies that, that show that what the government is saying is true? None of that. There were no complications. It was just the word, it just got down to the word vaccine. Do they have the vaccine? Do they have enough vaccine? So now getting back to February of 2022, I turn on the, uh, I turn on the mainstream media and the, the word vaccine has become arms. And it's a simple word, arms. Mr. Government official, have, do we have enough arms? Do you think that the brave Ukrainian people, you know, could survive better with our arms? Are we arming them enough, Mr. Government official? I mean, I watched one uh, a Fox thing and the, the host asked four questions and each of them ended in arms. <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't end in, do you, do you think that, you know, there's an interest in the Russian-Ukrainian border, uh, and do you think that interest? Do you think that interest will devolve in us taking taxes and sending it across the street here to Raytheon? <laughs> you know, and and do you think that, Mr. Jones? Do you think that our Lockheed sponsor here? You know, do you do you think that that fourteen point five billion dollars? will just actually go across this uh, river here to Virginia to uh, Lockheed, and it will never make it to those women who are fleeing uh, 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 Ukraine. It was just, there, there was no debate, no complications. It was just poor Ukrainians and arms, arms, arms. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I noticed. We've gone from Russia, 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 the vaccine, 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 to arms, arms, arms. Well, I'd like to uh, say that this goes back 
uh, all the way to the late 19th century, um, and you know, with the um, Anglo-Saxon Anglo-Saxon cabal to try to take over the world, and they knew as they planned World War One that they could not get everybody to agree to lose 40 million lives without controlling controlling the media, and that's one of the things that they targeted all during the the last 10 years of the 19th century and up into the 20th century, and that was to basically buy up all the media, buy up all of the, uh, and, if, and, and if they couldn't buy them, they would bribe them or just pay, or if they couldn't buy the newspaper, or whatever, they would just buy, they would just buy it, buy the, buy, buy the journalists and buy the editors. Uh, and so if you control the media, you control everything. And, and, you can literally get people to believe anything. And what you were talking about um, in, in, in this one word soundbite actually goes back to Edward Bernays, who wrote the book Propaganda. Uh, he was the uh, nephew of uh, Sigmund Freud, and he was the one who came up with the big lie, the, 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 the concept of the big lie, and say something as outlandish as possible, as um, as impossible to believe, and just keep saying it over and over and over at the exclusion of everything else, and everybody will end up believing it. So it was not actually Hitler who took Bernays's work. It was actually goes back to the Anglo-Saxons for the Boer War and the Boer Wars and the and World War One. And it hasn't stopped since, and, I, and I've given it a name, the Big Lie Propaganda Machine, and it works, as you said, you know, Russia, 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 vaccines, 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 and now, you know, arms, 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 and that's all people hear, and that's all they think, and that's all they talk about. So I... You know... I, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just... So, you know... So it's it's uh, Bernays uh, who who's fascinating, and I buy everything you said, but I think we have to give credit to the viewers and the readers who just continue brain dead. I mean, I know you know lawyers and and uh, doctors and Columbia uh, master's degree people who will who continue to read the New York Times. So the New York Times says Hunter Biden's laptop is Russian propaganda. And everyone knows the story. The New York Post, America's oldest newspaper, says in 2020, just before the election, that, hey, we've got Hunter Biden's laptop. And the American public doesn't hear the message because 50 intelligence professionals go into the Washington Post and say that's Russian propaganda. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that they could say that, it, that just sounds like a Mickey Mouse laughable thing. If you said that to me at a picnic, you know, that's Russian propaganda. I mean, what are you talking about? Putin can put Hunter like, you know, create Hunter <laughs> Biden's laptop with, with pictures of Hunter Biden with girls and get it into a Delaware shop. I mean, what are you talk? You know, I mean, what are you talking about? Putin yeah. can poison your poison your breakfast in Des Moines. It's just, it's like silly. But the American public was polled that they did not know about this, and they would have voted differently. Now, to continue the story, the New York Times says in just in the past couple of weeks, oh, Hunter Biden's laptop is. That's actually his laptop. So they're 18 months too late. And my point is that people continue to read the New York Times and the Washington Post. And they continue to watch, you know, these uh, news programs that said Hunter Biden's laptop didn't exist. I mean, it's, it's beyond me. I, I would think that would be it. You know, the New York Times just put a, a police line around it and arrest everybody in there and shut it down. But they get to lie, you know, generation after generation after generation. And what is it, Jeff? The logo? I mean, <laughs> how, how, 
No, but how can they lie about Durante in the Ukraine, about, you know, Missile Gap? How can they lie about the Kennedy assassination for a generation? Mm -hmm. They lie about Tonkin Gulf. I mean, my friend Norman Solomon went to the Washington Post and he said when a newspaper makes a mistake, they often a retraction. He said, I'm looking for the retraction for Tonkin Gulf. You covered Tonkin Gulf that it actually happened and it didn't. Where's the retraction? And the editor said, I don't know. I don't know. And they passed him. Finally, he went to an older editor who had worked at that time. And the editor said, Norman, if we retracted uh, Tonkin Gulf, we'd have to retract 11 years, if not more. <laughs> Yeah. In other words, it was all it was all bullshit. But then we we turn. But Jeff, I'm kind of asking a question. You know, it's I mean, Bernays is a genius, but how did why does the American public continue to read and you know look at these mastiffs that are? Is that the right word, mastiffs? Yeah, for the 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 the, 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 the yeah the the thing at the top of the new at the top of the uh, newspaper page. But I personally have friends who, you know, it's been like four, five, six, seven years. I, I point out, hey, the New York Times just outwardly lied again and they won't answer or they just say bullshit and continue, continue on. They're devoted to it for accuracy, and but it's not accurate. Yeah, I think a lot of it goes to, to the fact that, as I like to joke, that you know, we are brainwashed from the womb <laughs> about the, 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 the goodness and the greatness of our government, the goodness and the greatness of our free press, the goodness and the greatness of um, our political system, etc. And it is so relentless. I mean, grade school, church, um, advertising, Hollywood, uh, New York television, Los Angeles television, uh, you know, primetime TV, it is just absolutely, it's in sports, you know, the, 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 you know, the department of defense, the department of defense spends, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, you know, paying sports profession, professional sports teams to, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, be grind out patriotic messages. So I, I think we are so, <laughs> We are so I, I call it behind the Great Western Firewall, and I and I think that we are just so uh, enamored with uh, with ourselves and with our with everything that we have been literally um, programmed to believe that if, when they know that the New York Times is just told you know lie after lie after lie in PR, Washington Post, The Economist, I mean it, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, MS, you know, M, uh, um, you know, NBC, ABC, CBS, BBC. I think we're, we're there's this cognitive dissonance, and we just cannot accept the fact that they told the lie, and so we just forget that they did, and and and, and compartmentalize it in our brains, and and um, um, uh, tomorrow tomorrow's another day, and that's and that's how they can just keep doing it over and over and over again. But this has been going on since the late 19th. 19th century so it's uh, it's not new and it got concentrated uh with clinton with, with six or eight uh companies so trans the tran lot transnational corporations yeah that uh, that's people forget that uh fdr franklin donor roosevelt he's the one that broke up the media conglomerates in the 1930s because he knew they were destroying the uh the, the body politic and society and that's when he, he limited the number of newspapers that they could be owned by one person or one entity he, you know, the number of television stations and there were, and that you couldn't you couldn't you know cross over there was no overlap and of course Clinton signed that all away um, and uh, here we are today with you know six or eight um, you know multi 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 billion you know, billion dollar and euro some of them are european 
there's only six or eight left now that basically control 90% of the uh, non-socialist and communist, uh, you know, media in the world, and they're not our friends. You know, they represent the interests of the of the of the elite one uh, percent. So that's um, uh, that's also you know part of the problem. And you also mentioned you know the CIA control you know has has agents in every major newspaper, every uh, every radio station, every uh, every uh, magazine, every television station. Or the CIA is there. They're in Hollywood. They're in Los Angeles and New York in the television studios. So um, maybe, you know, when you when you see all of this, you can kind of go, well, maybe I can, you know, somewhat understand all these lawyers and doctors and educated people are so brainwashed. But <laughs> when you look at the system that has been installed for the last hundred years, it's... Um, for me, it's not really that surprising, although it's incredibly depressing. And it takes work to find my person. Wh what I look at is not the mainstream media, but I have a number of people, some on YouTube, but most you have to go to their websites now because they got kicked off of YouTube, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to search and then you have to see if they've been right. You know, my, my number one rule in, in finding my sources was, have they ever lied the, a, a populace into war? So right there, that knocked out all of the American media. <laughs> you know, if, 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 no, but if you, if you can't, if you're, if you're going to say, I'm not going to look at anyone who's lied us into war, then, you know, Fox News, CNN, it doesn't matter, liberal, left, right. Washington Post, uh, uh, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, they're all gone for me. So, so, you know, and then I keep track if, if they got some, if, you know, what did they get right? And when they get something wrong, I knock them out, you know, if they're going to be propagandists. And so it's a, it's a difficult job. And one person who I caught reading the line Washington Post, it was like the fourth time I said, hey, the post just lied and you read it every day. Why? And he said, because I'm lazy. He was a lawyer. And I wouldn't think that's part of the answer. Mm -hmm. Apathy, know, apathy, the laziness. Yeah. It comes to my driveway. Other people talk about it. McGovern, the great CIA Ray McGovern, this is a story that you can find in Covert Action magazine. When uh, the story came out that Donald Trump was being peed on by Russian prostitutes in the Ritz Carlton in Moscow, I was available and I thought, this is great. I'm going to jump on this story. I'm going to write a story about Donald Trump being peed on. And my first step was uh, Ray McGovern, ex CIA in Washington. And I sat at his kitchen table and he burst my balloon. He said, James, this is a Hillary Clinton bullshit story. Mm -hmm. This is not true. And I'm like, hey, Ray, I came through the airport. The story's running on MSNBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post. What do you mean it's not true? And then he, you know, he told me this is just made up propaganda that she's shoving through the mainstream mm -hmm. media. This was to, this was 2016. And I said, I later went to Moscow to check it out. But we Ray and I walked outside of his house and I'm standing there. We're about to get in his car. And I said, Ray, and I pointed to his neighbors, all the homes around him. And I said, Ray, what you just told me inside there, if you just told your neighbors, what would they think? And Ray looked at his neighbor's house and he looked at me and he said, James, it's not true unless it's in the Washington Post. <laughs> Well, I think that's a great way to close out our little conversation tonight. Well, you and I have just been, you know, to, we've done the JB West and JB EC and the Hague, and we've done 18 of them, and and we've done some we've done some fine reporting and about the ICC uh, a COVID complaint uh, against 16 people with names like Gates and Tedros and Rockefeller and uh, Fauci. 
uh, and uh, other Johnson, Boris Johnson, and others. And so uh, we just uh, were commiserating about the the unbelievable response of, that the West has foisted and perpetrated on uh, on Russia because of Ukraine, and we thought we'd have this little conversation and, and kind of share where our compasses are at. So, um, any any final statements, James, before we sign out? Well, all I'd like to say is that uh, uh, Russia, 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 vaccine, vaccine, <laughs> arms, 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 <laughs> and then we'll do another. And then when it turns into another simple sale for the American people, uh, we'll we'll. We'll be the first to comment. <laughs> All right. Well, this is JB West in France. JB East in New Zealand. And uh, we will be back soon. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.